And now to the growing international crisis with Iran and what that has to do with Texas. We are 7,200 miles away from where a U.S. airstrike killed a top Iranian general several days ago. Since then, stocks are down, gas prices are up, and anxiety has many on edge. This is our first topic for Congressman Lance Gooden this morning. The Republican from Terrell represents the 5th Congressional District, which stretches through seven counties from Dallas' White Rock Lake down to Palestine, and he is in studio. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Good Let's morning. start with uh, start with Iran. Uh, Happy New Year to you as well, too. It's Thank you. Hard to believe the New Year's been so long uh, ago as well, too. Let's start with Iran, though. The president campaigned on getting troops out of the Middle East, and here we are sending thousands more back to the, to the Middle East. Do you support that? I support the president 100%. This president is the first president in a while that has actually made good on his promises. We have uh, created an environment where America is not respected by our enemies, and Donald Trump has changed that. And in the last week, I think we've seen evidence of that. This president uh, said he would protect American lives abroad and American interests, and he's done that. And executing that general was absolutely the right thing to do. It should have been done long ago. Do you support a war with Iran? Absolutely not, and neither does the president. No one wants a war. I don't even know that Iran wants a war, um, but I think uh, we're getting to the point where Iran is going to have to make decisions about uh, what they're going to do next. They have limited options. The regime there in Iran is losing support. There are uprisings. Uh, just a few months ago, hundreds of their own citizens were actually killed by this regime uh, because they're so worried about losing power. So. Uh, that's something to watch uh, as the days move on. But they're, they're worried over in Iran about how they're going to respond and make good on their promise uh, to strike back, knowing that there will be further consequences. But what is a likely retaliation, do you think? Cyber attack or is it attack on a Maybe, foreign military um, base or what? In the last few hours, I believe, the uh, Iranian government has said that their intention is to attack uh, military, uh, uh, another military attack on us. Um, but again, their options are limited because of the weak support at home uh, for that Iranian regime. Well, let me ask you about this. W with everything, there's nothing that's black and white. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if Iraq expels the U.S. military from you know, the country over there? W wouldn't that put us at a disadvantage in fighting Iran or in fighting the Islamic State, which remains a threat today? Sure. There's a lot of bad things that could happen. Um, but. One of the worst things I can think of uh, would be to do nothing and let people or let countries, terrorist sponsors, continue to just march all over us, which is what they have done for years. Uh, the reason this general was stepping off a plane at the Baghdad airport so freely is because he'd done it for years. Uh, most terrorist leaders like him uh, fly under the radar, but this one for years brazenly just flew around the world knowing uh, that there were no repercussions. And this was, uh, this was enough for... Uh, for the president to say this this can't continue to happen and these attacks on the embassy a few weeks ago the attack on the contractors they started all this the president wants to end this and he said um, let's take some action and I'm happy he did Let, let's shift gears and talk about impeachment the house mm -hmm. speaker Nancy Pelosi has not it said seems like old news doesn't it? it it has been a long time there's a lot that's happened between then but the speaker has not said when she'll send over the articles of impeachment to the Senate the Senate must consider it, but does, does the Senate have any options while it's just kind of hanging in limbo here? Yeah, one of the great options, uh, which is why I'm just thrilled for her to sit on as long as she wants, is that Senator McConnell uh, can continue to push through nominations of all these judicial uh, conferees. Uh, the president has a lot of names out there, and I suspect you'll see throughout the month of January the Senate will be confirming uh, judicial nominees if Speaker Pelosi chooses to sit on uh, the impeachment articles, but I think the big issue uh, with these, uh, with this question about what is the speaker going to do is who cares? This whole process was illegitimate. She can sit on it. She can send it to the uh, to the Senate. I don't know that anyone cares what she does because anything she does, as far as I'm concerned, is illegitimate at this point. And by the Senate taking up all these judicial nominees mm -hmm. and the other 250 appointments that are out there. Right. How would that affect Democrats? Well, they're going to have a tough decision to make. Um, do they put aside their hatred for the president and send these uh, impeachment articles over to the Senate knowing he's going to be acquitted and is going to campaign on that? Um, or um, do they focus on these uh, these uh, judicial nominees? The appointments. Do, do they just accept that? They're going to have some decisions to make. But I think uh, what's interesting to me 
is that Republicans were totally shut out of the process on the House side, and now all of a sudden Democrats want to be in on the process on the Senate side. Speaker Pelosi has said since day one this is about the Constitution. Nowhere in the Constitution does it say the Speaker of the U.S. House tells the U.S. Senate how to run their trial for an impeachment. We're going to wait to see what happens on that, but I want to ask you in the final moments here, too, mm-hmm. you were the first congressman to get an endorsement for re-election from the president. Why in the world did he pick you out? Well, I have earned his trust uh, since I took How office. So? Um, I have executed on my campaign promises, and that was to support the Make America Great Agen- Again agenda, support the president. My district is a Trump district. We are Trump country, the heart of Trump country. Um, and the president has called you several times. It's right too, out right? that door, all the way to East Texas. Yes, he has. Uh, we uh, flew together on Air Force One here uh, to the rally just outside these uh, in October. In October. Yeah and really uh, got to know each other and we've spoken several times since then. He called me the day after my father passed in December and he's a wonderful man. Well, sorry to hear about your father and um, congratulations on the uh, successful first term it sounds like and happy new year to you as well too. Congressman Lance Gooden, the uh, congressman from the 5th Congressional District from Dallas's White Rock Lake all the way down to Palestine. Thanks for coming in. Thanks.